Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. Welcome to another All Out Leadership Podcast. Continuing in the life of David, we're addressing the five enemies that we all encounter on the path to success. We started looking at King Saul number one, which is the enemies above. You're always going to have some type of a person who is an authority figure in your life that will not be for you, that will be against you, that will in some way undermine you, try to block you, uh, hurt you in some way. We're all going to encounter that inside of our life, and so we looked at that last week. We're going to continue with David and Saul, and we're going to see how do you respond when somebody above you is hurting you or coming against you or trying to hinder you in some way. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 12. Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from his presence and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out, speaking of David, and came in before the people. And David behaved wisely, there it is, that's our point, wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. We're going to learn several things to do, and the first thing is this. Behave wisely. You never make a wrong right by doing wrong. I'm going to say that again. You never make a wrong right by doing wrong. Saul was completely wrong in what he was doing with David, but David did the right thing, even though the wrong thing was happening to him. Now, so he behaved wisely. What are some things that would be wise behavior when you have someone coming against you, trying to hurt you, throwing spears of criticism at you. Well, the first thing we see David do is this, and this is going to be a couple-part series uh, on some of the wise behavior that David had. Number one, he began by processing up with God. Be careful where you process. We're going to unpack this a little bit uh, this week and next week. Be careful where you process your pain and your problems and the people that are frustrating you in your life. Before you process with people, you must first process with God. Uh, that's much of what we see in the beautiful books of, of poetry and songs and worship called the Psalms. There's 150 Psalms where God's leaders and people are processing their pain and joy, their emotions, and all the things that they're going through. And inside of this, we see Psalm 59, which is actually David processing up with God this situation with King Saul. It was written when King Saul had actually set guards up at David's house to try to catch David because he wanted to kill David. And so we see Psalm 59. Now, this is what is called a precatory psalm. A precatory psalm, and precatory psalm is where uh, you're it's really a psalm where people are just venting their anger, venting their frustration, processing their emotion. They're even calling down curses <laughs> on their enemy. I'm encouraged by this because this is written in God's Word, and God wasn't upset that David processed and shared his pain and shared his anger because it's the right place because God can handle it. And let's just be honest. There are people that you counter that make you want to curse. And what I am encouraged by is David processed his cursing up. So rather than throwing your cursing out, just put it upwards towards God. He can handle it. I just want to read a little bit of Psalm 59 to you. Uh, Deliver me from my enemies, O God. They lie in wait for my soul. They make a noise like a dog. They belch out with their mouths. Swords are in their lips. It's just beautiful. He is just going on and on and painting all kinds of pictures about how he sees these enemies that are against him. David was brutally honest with God. God can handle your honesty. So look, whatever emotions you're having, don't bottle it up and suppress it. Spirituality is not about denying your emotions or suppressing your emotions because eventually they're going to come out and it's going to be really bad when they do. Um, It's about processing them and getting those out. You have to feel to heal. You have to feel to heal. So when you're sharing that with God, it's allowing a healing process to take place. The second thing is you're you're processing your pain up with God. Pray for your enemies because that's what Jesus taught us. Bless those that 
persecute you. Pray for those that spitefully use you. Well, I don't want to. (laughs) I get it. Who does? Uh, When I pray for an enemy, this is really something I want to pray. Oh, Father, I just pray that you would bless them today with a semi-truck that comes out of nowhere and runs them over so that they can enjoy your presence forever. (laughs) That's what I want to pray, all right? But the Bible says, bless those that persecute you. How do you do that? Well, first of all, when you understand that you killed Jesus... (laughs) I killed Jesus when he hung on the cross and he said, Father, forgive Eric. He knows not what he does. He forgave me. Then I can forgive others. And so when I understand that the sins Jesus has forgiven me are far greater than any sin anyone has ever committed against me or will commit commit against me, when I understand Jesus forgave a debt far greater, then it helps me forgive the smaller debts and crimes that others are committing towards us. Prayer will often not only change your your perspective, but prayer can change uh, the other person. A lot of times your enemy can actually change as you pray for them. But in this case, what we see is Saul never changed, but what we do see is this, God did deliver David. So even though he didn't, Saul didn't change, God did deliver David. Nobody holds your future, we said this last week, but God. So when you pray, God will deliver you, but also this, God will change your perspective about your situation. When we look at a story in 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, Elisha and his servant and the city that they were staying in were surrounded by their enemy. They woke up and the servant freaked out because like they're surrounded by a bunch of their enemy. And so he's stressed out. And, and, And Elisha just simply did this. He just said a prayer. He just said, Lord, open my servant's eyes that he might see open my servant's eyes that he might see. And then the servant's eyes were opened, and then he saw and realized that the enemy that was surrounded them was actually surrounded by God's army. Uh, The horses uh, of chariots of fires were all around them, and they realized that that more were for them than were against them, and that's how it always is. Remember, when Satan fell, he only took a third of the angels with him. That means there's more in God's camp than there ever is in the enemy's. Satan is always outnumbered, and honestly, with just God on your side, Just with God, Satan's already outnumbered because God is all-powerful. And so when we pray, what it allows us to do is get God's perspective on that person, and it allows us to get God's perspective on this problem, and then it frees our heart from fear, worry, stress, and anxiety, and it allows us to once again put Jesus on the throne and allow him to fix things and make everything right. All right, we're going to continue on where we process because there's some other steps we see David took that were healthy on how to process his pain when dealing with a difficult fear. See you next week. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gained new biblical insight that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an all-out leader.